Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from MizraAutomation.com and welcome to another video from MizraAutomation on getting started with shell scripting in Linux operating system. So in this video, we are going to talk about some of the basic operation that we can do in terms of the process which is running within our Linux operating system using shell scripting. So we have been talking about the shell scripting basics like working with files and working with the text files and directories and stuff. But in this video, we are going to discuss how we can work with some of the process which are running within our Linux operating system. So if you wanted to see all the process which are running in Windows operating system, you probably use what is called as a task manager or you probably use uh, to see all the service running using the services.msc something like that so if you just do the services.msc you will see eventually all the services are running in windows operating system but if you want to use the same process which are running in the linux operating system you just do something like ps hyphen a to see all the process which are currently running but at the moment you can see that it's only showing you the process which are running like the tty which is the terminal session which is currently running and it is not really showing any of the process other than the uh, the ps which is the actual ps that it is showing if i wanted to see all the process which are which are running then i will probably do ps hyphen au to see the particular users uh, process which are running but if i wanted to see the complete processes are running for the entire operating system then i will do hyphen aux to show me all the processes which are running for different users within this particular uh, operating system something like the root user so you can see that this is for the user which is the root user and also is uh, for the uh, user like the parallels desktop user over here and there are some processes are running exclusively for the system d uh, and uh, and something like that so these are the things that you can actually see the, all the process which are currently running over here so if i wanted to see if i have my firefox process running there or not then i can just go over here let me clear the screen and then i can just do ps hyphen aux and then i can once again use a pipe and then i can use the firefox like that so you remember this command which we used like actually the grabbing based on the filtration that we did before we can actually do that as so you can see that all the firefox which is listed within uh, your process are actually coming up but if you want to get just the process which is running the firefox you can see this one this is the actual process that we're talking about over here if i want to actually get that particular firefox alone like the last word should be the firefox instead of getting the fire firefox which are inside uh, like other text so you can do that as well in the grub using the percentage d option over so you can see that this is the actual firefox that we're talking about over here but if you wanted to really kill the firefox itself like the kill the whole firefox instance which is currently running then all you have to do is you just need to use something like a p kill command and within this p kill command you can just specify hyphen f and then the firefox over here this will actually kill the firefox itself for you so this way you can see that the whole firefox instance can be killed so this is the way that you can actually grab the firefox uh, uh, like the process using the actual process is running within our Linux operating system and the next thing that we can actually see is the disk information so it's you can actually just do something like a df to actually show you all the disk file usage over here like the file system like tempfs and the sda2 like what is the total size of it and then tempfs and then there is a sda1 and there is an icloud and there is a tempfs so you can see all these where it is mounted all the details are actually being shown over here so this is how you can see all the disk information but i'm not going to go deep into the disk file information over here because that is not part of this particular video but this is the place where you can actually see all the disk file information for your machine. And you can also see all the disk usage as well, something like du to tell you like how much of the size or the memory your disk uh, is being used over here. So you can see that it is the 4 MB, uh, which is used for the download and 16, uh, I think it's 4 KB or something like that. It's been used for the downloads and for the parallels like that. And all the file details is listed over here. This is the disk usage that you can actually see. And also there is a very nice utility, pretty much like the task manager that you can use is nothing but the top, which is gonna show you all the uh, actual process which is running within your machine like the uh, PID the user uh, and all the details like the CPU percentage which is being used for the particular process uh, and which command is actually taking so much of memories and stuff so you can actually use this as well this is another uh, great way of doing it so this is pretty much like the ps-aux that you just did uh, but this is going to be 
something that you can get like all the process information over here and to quit this particular uh, top all you have to do is just do q so that it's going to quit it out and then you can clear the screen from here and if you want to see all the services that are currently running within your machine you can actually use something called a sys system ctl which is gonna show you all the process which are currently running but it's not going to be showing like all the process exactly because you have to specify the type as the service so you can see that currently it's also showing all the devices over here and also showing the mounts at the same time it's also going to show you the services over here but if you want to see all the services just the service itself then you can just specify system ctl and then you can just specify list hyphen units and here you have to specify the type as service so once you specify the service over here it's going to show you all the services which are currently running within your machine so you can see that it is an account a daemon dot service there is an alias restore uh, dot service and there is an apport service uh, cup service something like that you can also get the status of the service which is currently running like the running state or the exited state because you can actually see it from here but if you want to get more information about your service for instance where the service is currently deployed and running whether it is a linked file service or it is something which is already sitting in that same directory that you are running through you can actually see all these informations as well so the way that you can see it is by using for example uh, if i want to see a service which is gonna be, let's say, the modem manager or something like that. So I'm just gonna copy this modem manager uh, and then I can just say status and I can paste the service name over here. And if I hit enter, you can see that it is gonna show me the status of the modem service, like a modem manager service. It's currently running. So there is a green symbol there. Uh, it is currently active and the place where it is running is in the slash user slash s bin of the modem manager so this is the place where this particular executable is sitting where the actual execution is happening for the particular service and there are some logs here and these logs you can actually see uh, from the uh, journal ctl as well i mean journal ctl is something which we'll be discussing later point of time in this particular series but at the moment you can see that this is the place where you can see all the services which are running within your linux operating system and the last command which i'm probably going to show you is very very important and you may really really re need this for many time that you'll be using this for example the which command so if you just type which i mean it's not going to give you anything but you just have to say which hyphen uh, dollar shell it's going to actually show you what shell is this actually that we are running it's going to show you that this is a bash shell similarly if you're going to say which of ls you can also do for ls as well like where this particular uh ls is really so you can see that even the ls is basically like an, an uh like a bash command which is actually sitting in the slash user slash bin of ls and most of the uh things that you have used like cat grep or whatever that you have used it's all sitting under the slash bin slash uh slash user slash bin itself so now if i just do grep over here you can see that it is sitting in the slash user slash bin slash grep uh, and similarly which of ps it is sitting sitting under the slash user slash bin so how is this slash user slash bin is going to look like so if i just do an ls of slash user slash bin and you can see that there are quite a lot of utilities that we have been using all these days is actually sitting over here I mean, we have not used a lot there so far, but you can see that all the commands that you will be ending up using is actually sitting under the slash user slash bin directory. So basically all the binary file which is required by the user is actually sitting under this particular directory. So that's the which command, which is a which is very, very useful where you can verify uh, what exactly is happening, like which uh, uh, shell is executing and which software is executing where is the location of the particular directory everything you can see from the which command so that's it guys these are some of the basic process operations that i wanted to cover in this particular video but i know that there are so many things that we still have to cover we have still not covered find yet and we still have to do some more uh, coverage but for now to get started for you with the linux operating systems shell programming these are some of the commands that you really really require for you to get started so in our next video we are going to start working with some of the variables in shell scripting and then slowly we'll get into conditions loopings and then how we can start writing our own shell script files and how we can create a full automated workflow by using all the powerful tools that we have got within the next operating system thank you